welcome to part two of my interview with the champion maker, Audrey Caipio. If you missed part one, don't worry, just go to the description section and there'll be a link there that will lead you to the first video or click up here or up here. If you're already caught up, let's get back to it. So you have helped to pioneer and shape the industry. What changes have you seen in that time from the beginning to today? The changes in the industry. Well, first and foremost, the posing. Even though when Fitness Model Show started in North America in the year 2000, they did give the guidelines, we're following after fashion models, we want it to be like fashion model, we don't want to be bodybuilding poses. Girls didn't know what that really meant and nor did coaches because they were bodybuilding coaches because it's closed new, so they didn't know. So everyone's still doing the and the, and the, um, a lot of the poses that you see now that are just, oh, this is a fitness model pose. I was the first one to invent them at the time. My most, my two most famous, for example, when Sean Staff puts his hands through his hair in his back pose and does his lat spread and, and trap activation. That had never been done up to that point. So when I gave that pose to him when he won his first show in 2011, he still does those poses, it was groundbreaking. People were like, whoa, did you see he did his hair? and his back at the same time. But something like that, now you see every, everyone doing to set a standard in the industry is this is how you pose in fitness model shows. Um, with James Alexander Ellis, when I gave him the, his quad out, and my favorite. <laughs> the men come to you all the time, it's like, well, I wanna do that pose. But at the time, again, this, these kind of poses uh, weren't being done, so when I um, in, invented them, they were quite groundbreaking, but now they're, they're copied over and over and over and over again, James is, um, video of his routine and it got over 2 million hits at this point and yeah, people wow. come to me and they're like, oh, I want to do that. I'm like, well, it doesn't suit your body or your personality. I chose it for, for James. But <laughs> um, so first and foremost, the style of posing, I mean, bringing in my natural style and uh, showmanship and, and uh, stage presence and all that, the, the, definitely this, it's influenced the entire industry, even overseas. Um, the posing is definitely better in the UK because of my influence and we always trump the Americans when we go to America to compete. Oh, really? oh yes. Like yes. When my girls go to America, they're in a smaller show and there's only like say, two, two Audrey girls in the show, they stand out like oh, wow. crazy. So my girls, um, Monique Ling and Olivia Stan went to Miami to compete. They're the only two of my students there. And they said they felt like superstars. People were like, where'd you girls come from? And, like they were just, because the, they're stage presence, not just the posing off obviously, it's the stage presence, they're oozing. And um, yeah, they think oh, the American. Who taught you yeah. that to do that? Where did you go with outer space? It's amazing. She said they felt amazing. They felt like superstars there with all the skills they had in their back pocket. They've been with for a while and they're amazing at what they do now, but they, they loved it. So the first and foremost, yeah, so posing has changed in the industry from my influence. Um, but also it's the growth of the industry but it was so small before, nobody knew what a fitness model show or bikini show was. And now it's just massive. So everyone will have someone in the gym who's a competitor. Or it's, everyone wants to compete. It's the change in everyone wants to get up on stage and have their 50 minutes of fame. Would be, in the past, people didn't even know there was this option. So those are the two main changes. Um, did you ever envision you would be the biggest posing coach, the most popular posing coach in the industry across the world? <laughs> No, I never thought I'd be the biggest posing coach because there was no industry to be a full-time posing coach or the biggest or anything. I just thought it was a little thing I was doing on the side because there was no industry for it. You know, if you only have one show with 20 people in it, you're not going to have a career. So absolutely not. I had no idea this could be possible. When did you realize you had the skills of what it takes to teach someone how to be confident and how to pose on stage? Um, from my very first client, um, obviously I even, everything evolved, but from my very first client, because I have, like, when you go to drama school, there's so many exercises they do. They, there's, when you're on stage, like sometimes you have an audience that's dead, and you're like, well, oh, can I, okay, that, I sucked that performance. Like a lot of performances I did suck, I sucked. So you learn actually from a lot of your mistakes as a, as a performer. So you have like this toolbox of skills from, you know, again, like, you know, 40 something years of being on stage and classes and stuff. You have all these skills of what works and what doesn't work. So when I meet people with different personalities, they're so shy, they have shells, they have guards. What works for one person, I know is not gonna work for them. So it's just this massive toolbox I have. And now because I've done it so long, even compared to the first year, which I still 
I was, I was able to, you know, get people performing properly. But now that I've had, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students, I that's even honed in a bit better because I can more, I can quickly make them lose their confidence. And it's just, yeah, it's just a toolbox of um, skills and little exercises that make people do. Because the average person who does a fitness not a show is not a performer. About 5% of my girls are guys. Maybe, yeah, they've been on stage for something, they've, they've danced or something. But 95% of the students who come to me say, Audrey, I'm scared. This is out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm, I'm shitting a brick. <laughs> me! <laughs> so that's who, who the average competitor is. So my job is to make a non-performer into a performer. And real performers, professionals will say, you can't teach performance. You either um, have or can't teach stage presence, pardon me. So real, real uh, performers will say, you can't teach stage presence. You either have it or you don't have it. But I teach it. I have ways to uh, break down barriers and just to get out people's personality. So it's um, yeah, it's just something that I, I have to just this toolbox and skills to do. What sets your methods apart from other posing coaches? Why should someone choose you over another coach? What I teach, like pretty much nobody else in the world teaches. So first and foremost, obviously we have to teach the actual poses. So I have an eye for looking at anybody and making it look better than it does. And I do this demonstration in my class where I tell, ask, has someone competed before? Somebody gets up, they, I just show your old front pose. I go, okay, students, watch this. And I do a couple moves on their body, feet thing, and I step back and everyone goes, oh! So that's the first skill I have because a lot of my girls and guys who win, they say to me, I'd be backstage, I did not have the best body. No way, so this girl did. But my students know how to show their body, how to hide their bad points, how to um, make their waist smaller, their quads bigger than necessary, all these all little tricks that I have. So that's the first thing I do, which is uh, like step, step one. But this, the second thing I do is bringing out their unique personalities. One thing you'll notice is none of my students are carbon copies of me. What I do is I find their unique personalities. I can't give someone a James Alexander Ellis routine if that's not their personality. It's not gonna work for them. So I find their personality. I find their level of transitions. Not everyone can do dance moves, like you know, slinky transitions. They don't have that in their muscle memory. They would look stupid if they did it. So everything is home, not just for the personality, but for what's in their muscle memory from their lifetime, from everything. So when they go on stage, they nail it, they stand out. Then the third thing I do, and this comes from my decades on stage, is I teach them how to deal with nerves. When you're in a studio, it's not the same as being on stage. So what I do is I have all these different little tricks and exercises and rehearsals where I introduce them to adrenaline and nerves and I make them cry usually <laughs> after, but they mess up in class. And I would say, you're gonna mess up in class and you won't mess up on stage. So they leave something, oh my God, what just happened? And then I say, well, how was the real show? They say, great. Actually, I remember one of my students, Eleanor, she goes, oh, just so you know, your mock show was the worst day of my life. I go, how was the show? The best day of my life. And that's kind of what I do. I give them all the terrible stuff in class, but they don't mess up on stage. But the average competitor who doesn't have me, they will say after the show, oh my God, I messed up on the real stage because they didn't have me to mess them up beforehand. Besides teaching, what other skills do you have? My skills. <laughs> But pretty much anything, give me a stage, give me a camera. So um, I love I love acting, I love performing, I love dancing, I love anything. My um, When I was an actress, my main two, uh, two things, kind of styles of acting, I love comedy. You probably can see that in some of the things I do. I just absolutely love uh, comedy acting, hence I make these funny videos and stuff with my students. And um, just like, this kind of sexy roles. When I was in drums, so I could never do the crying roles. Like, who wants to cry? Mm -hmm. Like, what's, what's up the with that? Face. <laughs> Can you explain to um, newcomers and even athletes that have been in the industry for quite a while who maybe don't use a posing coach, the importance of using a posing coach and how it can change their whole stage presence, basically career, it can have a whole yeah. change in effect. So most people think, what's the big deal? I can watch a YouTube video and just copy it or learn a few things from it and adapt it. Like that's what the average newbie thinks. And I'm like, <gasps> good posing. No, well, for example, let me use, use examples of my students. So someone like James Alexander Ellis, when he came to me and I gave him this killer routine that got filmed by Jeff Simpson put on YouTube and got two million hits. His whole career that he has now, uh, five years later, is because of 
that video, that routine. So it was a two part, but we needed obviously to just to film it to put it up. But if he hadn't, if he just come out walking normally like every other guy who came out, he wouldn't have gotten the fan base that did. People were so blown away. Yes, by his body, but it was the routine that was showing it. Yes, he may have still won with just his body, but just like a million champions, a lot of people win, but they're never heard from again. So a killer routine like that is talked about and talked about. Men still can't keep it all, but that routine was amazing. So that's the first thing a good routine can do. Second thing with coming to a pose coach like myself is again, the skills I have is to make your body look even better than it does. So a lot of my students don't have the best bodies, but they trump the person who does because of how I've shown it off. Um, so there's so many elements to be noticed by the judges that you remember after. And absolutely the stage presence and personality that I bring out in my students makes you stand out. If you have 20 good looking girls in a row, and say they're all perfect, say they're all potential to win first, you need these extra stage present tricks to boom, pop out. And sometimes lineups can be like that, where you think, well, they're all beautiful. I actually don't see any bad or good. This is what makes the difference. When the lineups are like that, the judges are looking for anything to differentiate them. So like, okay, they all got good boots, they all got good bodies there. We need something else. Well, that girl looks miserable. Okay, well, they need to be marketable. So the miserable looking girl, or the nervous looking girl, goes down a notch. It's that simple. With my students as well, I teach them how to deal with nerves in my classroom. So when they get up stage, one, they remember their routine, and two, they can do all my stage presence tricks. So a lot of people will practice in the studio with, by themselves, with their coaches, but they don't have the skills that I teach on how to deal with nerves, and they mess up, quite simply. And you can see it when someone's nervous, when someone's forgotten something, it shows in their eyes, and that confidence, as soon as you lose your confidence, it's game over, the judges can see it as well. I can completely agree with that, having judged, when, especially with bikini tall, for example, when you've got 30 beautiful women with amazing bodies on stage, it really does come down to who stands out the most, who's giving you the most, who's continually posing the whole time they're on stage. It's been years since I've judged a contest, obviously. I've, I've coached most people the show, and I don't want to judge nor ignore what anyone asks me anymore. But when I was judging uh, years back, again, that's sometimes what it was. I would be like, hey, well, I'd like everyone for different reasons, but how do I decide who I don't like or who I like? And, I'd see them on the back wall, relax their abs, and just kind of look a bit bored. Like, okay, okay, he's out of the running. Because you need something, something to start making the places. So stage presence is very important. I think one of the people that you've coached, who I notice, um, sets that example, is um, Joel Corey. When he was on stage, the guys, when he was at the back, he wasn't even at the forefront. He was continuing to pose. And when you have people around him that are just kind of relaxed. Yeah. Then, from a judge's point of view, you're it's like, okay, you're not interested. It's not important. You don't, you naturally don't look as good as compared to the guy next yeah. to you who's continually giving it all. And people think, oh, you can get that routine quite quickly. So, someone like Joel's routine, which is another well-talked about routine. People mention how much they like him. He did my four-week posing course two times. He did about ten private lessons. He did my rehearsal classes, my mock show classes, and he has an insane work ethic where he was practicing every single day for at least an hour a day, sometimes more in between that. So when you see a polished routine like that, it's not something that you can just do in like two lessons. A lot of people say to me, oh, well, I'm nice to come see you for like a one day workshop, you know, you know say four hours or something, do it all in one day. Uh, I always say, I'll be taking your money. Like you, you need to spread things out. It's a lot of lessons. It's a lot of your practicing. It's not something you can just pick up like that. It's a long process. And some of my students that have been with me for years and years and years, I'm still throwing new things in. Even though some of my girls had a great walk from the first first course, I'm still improving their walk as we go. I'm still improving some of the basic things. So they weren't bad to start with. They were quite, quite good students. They won their first show. But four years later, I'm still improving. I'll say choose routines for the high profile students because the routines have been seen before. So you need fresh routines. Some people who have lower profiles, we can use the same routine over and over again for a while. But we're working on those nuances of, of sparkle and shine and just making everything tighter. And that's what a true professional does in, in any kind of performance, is about making it better and better. When you see an actress like Meryl Streep doing an amazing movie, you have no idea the gazillions of hours of training and practice that went into making it look so real. When you watch Meryl Streep, you believe that she's that character. Because now you have your online uh, posing classes and tutorials. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I've launched um, the world's most concise online posing course ever. Um, so I go through, I have a men's site, a member site, a women's member site, so two different, different sites. 
So we go through all the posing for um, the standard bikini shows as well. Like there's those poses, there's the poses for fitness model shows, uh, purely the bikini category, all those categories. Um, so I teach in my courses walking and it's just everything is broken down. So the first half of each video you watch, I explain. You watch the demos of me and my champions. Then at the second half of the video I say, get up and practice with me and my champions and I actually talk you through it. So every step, every foot, every hand, everything is explained to you. So every, you can't, you can't make a mistake because it's so broken down. It was the most tedious project to make these videos. I can't even tell you how tedious it was, but everyone's like, wow, like you left no stone unturned. We understand what to do because I'm actually talking you through it as you're doing it. And there's obviously myself or my champion doing it, slow motion shots, close up shots and just full instructions. So it was difficult to, at first think, how can I make my method come out on a video and it took a while like um, to be able to know how it presented on the video but we did it. So yeah, so it's the walking, the posing, the transitions um, and then ties it all together in the T-walk. What would you say to someone who kind of says, yes, I'm going to go and do a fitness show but I'm not going to do posing? <laughs> I'm not going to do a posing class. Don't, don't, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to feel terrible. Like, I talk to so many people who aren't my students. And they say they cried after a show. They watched the video back. They couldn't. They, I couldn't even watch the video back because it was cringeworthy. Because they practiced probably quite a few times in the studio. I, I believe everyone does some practice, and it seemed fine until they actually got on the real stage, and it wasn't fine. So don't do it. It is such a massive part of even if you're not there to win. If you're there just to have a great experience, you want to have a great experience. You don't want to cry out. You want to feel confident. You want to know you did the best you can. And with every trick and tool I give my students, they always say to me, oh, I think the whole time I'm on stage, it's like having an earpiece to you in. They're like, do this now, do this now, do this now, do this now. Like the whole time they hear my voice, what I'm teaching in the class, like I'm obviously <laughs> doing that the whole time. And so even if they make a mistake, they always have the next tool to grab and my, my tips in their ears to, to do it. And it never throws them off. Every single one of my students talks about how amazing it was after the show. And that's the, the biggest things you want to enjoy it. You want to win, you have the potential to win. You want a good video, you want good photos, you want everything to be just awesome afterwards. Part three will be uploaded to our YouTube channel next week. To make sure that you don't miss it, click on the subscribe button. And while you're there, click on that little bell so that you can get notifications of when we upload our videos. I will see you in part three. Bye.